Uh, so the concept of Ibambo is, you know, Ibambo is seen to be hardworking, and uh, in the streets they say that Awaka Mumbo Makanyon. So Awaka Mumbo or Ibambo is the concept of working hard, or you can call it hard work, you know, um, hard work in terms of trying to be tenacious at what you do, waking up in the morning, going to work doing something creative you know or if it's not creative it is regular you know they see you as a hustler who, who goes out to work you know when we talk about nine to five in this day in this time and age you go out at a regular time you come back at a specific time and people see you in community as hard working and they see you as somebody who is um um responsible you know because responsible people go to work and come back you know so the concept of Wibambo is not just uh, about uh, hard work. From my perspective, it has a component of being a little bit smart. Um, because, like I have said earlier, that Abaka Mambo Makanyon, you know. So if I take my journey as a psychologist who is practicing in Enugu, <laughs> you realize that um, in the time when I went to study psychology in 2003, People weren't uh, hustling with psychology. Psychology wasn't something that you would hustle with. You know, if you want to hustle, you probably hustle with being a medical doctor or being an engineer or being an accountant or an architect. You know, our teachers used to tell us that the kind of hustle that we need to do is the one that the courses that we need to study are courses that allows you to employ yourself when you finish. So they call it professional courses. And they forgot to tell us that being a carpenter is a profession. And if you're a professional carpenter, then that's your, that means you're a professional. So we were thinking that professional or having a profession were careers that were focused at helping you be able to be self-employed, you know. And what I have realized is that the courses that we do in school today are not going to solve the problems of tomorrow. The courses that we do today are not going to solve the problems of tomorrow. So i give you an example. When we were in school, we never knew that AI would come up and take up the space as much as it has done. And we're just seeing the very basics of AI. But thinking about, talking, going back to the concept of Ibambo. So I started off with trying to be a psychologist and you know, it was a road less traveled. We didn't know where it was heading to and we just felt like we were going to solve problems because I've always talked about solving problems. But, you know, when you start off life, and like I've seen very great people talk about the likes of Zuckerberg, and they say that, you know, ideas do not come fully formed, you know. You just have a dint, a, just a spark of idea, and you now go out pursuing it and hoping that the road will lead you to where you want to get to. So the hustling that we did was to go to the university first, Study human psychology or some level of animal behavior. Studied that and tried to use that to solve problems. Um, and we were hustling in the academic, and I'm still hustling in the academic sector, and also cum civil society angle. The Ibambo that we do is not the type of Ibambo that requires to go to the market, buy and sell on a daily basis, but it's a strategic Ibambo that we use knowledge to make money, so I just came back from the Northeast, and what I went to do was to look at what is called Safe School Declaration, which is basically a declaration that is global with over 100 something countries signing to it that irrespective of the fact that there is conflict and violence, that schools will still be going on, that there are mechanisms and processes that have to be set at, uh, in place to make sure that people go to school and children go to school and they continue studying. You know, part of the slogan that many development partners have said is that education cannot wait. But that's on the side. So the Ibambo that I do is not the typical kind of Ibambo. It is the Ibambo of using knowledge to solve problems. So I read about something that happens to children, especially the rights of children, and I am, I am hustling to see how I can solve that problem and to give myself some level of relevance. So I give you an example, and I think that this is where 
the current concept of Ibambo should go for us as human beings, as Igbos, and as people. So I read in the news or in research that about six percent, uh, one, uh, t six, five to six in, uh, in 10 children have experienced violence. And less than 5% of these children do not have access to supportive services. When I mean supportive services, I'm talking about legal services, uh, mental health services, uh, protection services like a shelter, and, and the rest of them. But less than 5% of these children have access to supportive services. And the ideas that needs to be done, if you listen to this, you realize that where the problem is, is that one, there's a high prevalence of child abuse in Nigeria, but there is also a very low access to supportive services for children who have faced violence. So my kind of Ibombo is to look at how can we provide supportive services for children to make sure that they have access to treatment that is necessary or supportive services that is necessary for them. So what are you uh, hustling about? That's the question. Uh, what Kehina Bombo, in what sector are you struggling and how are you using knowledge, information to be able to solve problem? So you hear about a problem and you think about how do I solve that problem? And one of the things that I have realized is that sometimes we have a problem of transfer of knowledge. You have all the knowledge that you, have, you need to acquire from school, but we find it difficult to transfer that knowledge into solutions. So I give you two examples that has happened to me in the recent times. I saw an offer for a consultancy on the internet, um, and I, was, I applied. The office that I'm submitting that proposal is in, in Lagos, and I am in Enugu. The application was ending today, for example, by 12, by 12 midnight. And I needed to apply. It took me like three days of sleeping in the office, two days likely, to prepare the proposal along with my colleague. And by the time we finished that preparation, it was around 12 noon in the afternoon. And I'm still in Enugu, Nigeria, and I don't have a flight ticket to be in Lagos and submit that proposal by myself. So what did I do? I simply thought that if boat is in Lagos, I can use boat as a delivery service to send my documents in the office that I'm going for. So I simply took that document to the airport. I sent it through somebody that works in the airport and the document arrived in Lagos. Once it arrived in Lagos, I took my phone, I put my, Google, my boat on, and I started searching for a ride in Lagos. So the first ride took the ride and I asked, I told the person, this is what I want. I want you to go to the airport pick up a document from somebody and take it to an XYZ location. The first person said, no, I can't do it. I don't do that kind of work. I said, okay, Toshikena, bye-bye. Let's wait for another person. I put in the same, and another person picked it up. The person picked it up, and he took that document to the office where I needed it to be sent to. And when that document was sent there, the people, there was some delay. I called and by around 6.37, my document was submitted. And in a few months' time, I got a contract of up to 16 million naira. And this is simply an idea of transfer of knowledge. You must be able to solve problems and help yourself solve a problem that is within your space, your capacity. But you must be able to use the ecosystem around you to be able to solve that problem. And that is the concept of Ibambo in the modern sense for me, because if we keep hustling as somebody that lives in Enugu, and I'm just looking for opportunities that is within Enugu, I will not get that kind of volume of resource that I need. So Ibambo has to do with issue of seeing a problem, thinking about what is the best solution to solve that problem, and looking about resources, the ecosystem that will help you to solve that problem. Second problem, like I mentioned about what I do, um, the issue of uh, child abuse. So child abuse is very prevalent that many people sitting here may have seen a child in their neighborhood being abused. And the truth is, they do not know what to do. They do not know, should I go to the police? 
or should I go to where? Or should I talk to an NGO to be able to get the problem sorted out? And I guess if I ask anybody sitting here now, if you see a case of a child who has been abused, what is the next thing that you should do? So currently, um, through our Ebambo style, we have gotten a, an organization in the US to help us develop an app that works like Boats or works like Uber. And what does it do? Or what will it do? It will simply, you see a case of a child who has been abused here, you just go to the app, make a report, and the report will go to the closest center, closest to you, whether you are in Ugu, Lagos, or Abuja, it will go to the closest center registered on the app that is solving or providing service for children who have been abused. So, the concept of Webambo for me is about seeing a problem, trying to provide a solution, but also being able to transfer the knowledge that you have in your head to tangible problem-solving strategies. So do not sit, for me, I do not think that if you sit around and say, I'm living in Enugu, so the opportunities are limited. I personally think it's a, a, a fallacy. If the problem is in Silicon Valley, is in New York, is in Nigeria, is anywhere, Kuala Lumpur, wherever the problem is, and you are sitting down here, you have the capacity of solving that problem based on the knowledge you have, especially if it's your technical area, and making money out of it. So concept of Ibambo for me in modern times is about solving problems that are within our, our environment or beyond our environment, but it's about using knowledge to be able to make money and solve problems, whether you are solving it from a social entrepreneurial style or you are solving it from a, a, a general knowledge style and, or a general business making style. But another thing that I have found with Ibambo is that there is a momentum that comes with consistency. Sometimes you see, I personally do not think that it is worth the while to see somebody who studied English, for example, and after four years of being studying English, you become a brand, special, brand, brand, um, brand consultant. Why didn't you go studying branding or social science or, or com uh, mass communication for four years? and build the knowledge and skill that is necessary. Sorry if you are studying uh, your brand specialist. <laughs> and build the momentum with knowledge and skill and push your ideas forward. So I give you an example. If I were studying English today, I will open a blog from my year one and I will start writing on that blog. My target will be to get a Google AdSense on my blog. If I'm able to drive traffic on my blog, I'll be able to make money from being an English or a linguist. The concept of Ibambo for me is about thinking about problems or using what you have to be able to make money and be strategic about it. So many times we have a lot of things happening around us and we are not utilizing that momentum that we need. Over the years, I have found that the consistency that I have put in, in trying to be a psychologist and trying to be a child rights advocate has started to pay off because I have gained necessary knowledge and the necessary network that is, ne that is important to, as to build on your career. Because imagine that you were in civil society and at some point you have built 10 years or six years or four years in that civil society work and you get a government job and they say government job is permanent and you, you leave all the knowledge that you have gotten and the networks that you have gotten from civil society and you go to civil service and you start building a career around that. All those ones gone with the wind. But consistency has a way of helping you drive your knowledge, your skills, and it helps you to shape and sharpen your skills and your abilities, and you continue striking at a particular thing, you will definitely become more relevant, more popular, 
more sought out for. And sincerely, there are ideas that I'm working on. People call me and ask me, please, I'm working on this thing. Can you help me sort it out? And then it's already in my archive. Maybe I worked on it three years ago, two years ago, five years ago, and it didn't work. And I'll just tell it to you. And I'll say, I, I, I'll hustle and do this thing. Maybe it will take me a while. OK, pay me 250000 for an idea that I've dropped in my archive. If I wasn't a psychologist or a clinical psychologist or a child rights advocate who had worked on these things before, I won't be able to have things in my archive. And what is very similar to this is what they call um, collectors. There are people who are collectors. They are collectors of watches. They may be collectors of artwork. They may be collectors of phones. And when you need a particular component in that phone or in that watch that is old and you come to them, they charge you a premium on it. I don't know if I'm making sense. I'm talking in American Western sense. <laughs> Those things that they've collected over the years will probably pay them off in five years after they have collected them. But what they are building on is the momentum that they have built. So we need to be able to uh, be hustlers or mambo in the modern sense. Um, we will not just do it in the sense of what I said in my premise, that Awaka Mumbo is for Nyono alone, but Awaka Mumbo that goes with hard work and skill and knowledge, and you are able to transfer knowledge and practicalize it into real life or real-time solutions. So this is my idea about that, Ibombo. Thank you.